All right, welcome back to the Chris Baxter Show. Uh, we are going to be discussing the New Orleans Saints and the San Francisco 49ers. Um, it's going to be the first game this weekend of the NFC playoffs. Uh, Andy, how do you see this one playing out? I think the Saints just outscored the Niners. It's going to be uh, offense by the Saints, and there will be no offense by the Niners at all. Alex Smith won't get it going. They won't control the clock because Frank Gore will get shut down. Saints defense steps up this weekend. Well, one of the worst-ranked defenses is not going to get uh, all of a sudden. Mark. I called it. You heard it first here. Uh, in, uh, here's a statistic. Uh, outside of the Dome, the New Orleans Saints average a little bit over 20 points per game. That's compared to the 30-plus uh, that they average at home. Uh, they're going to be playing outside in a hostile environment against one of the best defenses in the league. Only allowed two rushing touchdowns during the season. Um, and uh, I think if New Orleans is going to have a shot on this, they've got to get some form of ground game going. And I don't mean Darren Sproles on the screens. The linebacking core of the uh, San Francisco 49ers is too good. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, and it shouldn't be considered, but the upset, the home team, the San Francisco 49ers, beats the New Orleans Saints uh, probably somewhere around uh, 24 to uh, 21 or maybe 24-17. Um, I, I really think that San Francisco is going to step up. Uh, Alex Smith only has five picks this year, and uh, he's really taking care of the ball. And, uh, you know, we will probably be seeing the San Francisco Fortinators in the NFC title game. Hopefully. Uh, I'm a big fan, and, uh, you know, I'd like to see it uh, work out for those guys. They've worked hard this year. Cole, any thoughts on this game? Uh, I like the 49ers over the Saints. Their defense is amazing. And Frank Gore is just a beast. I don't see the Saints, Saints being able to stop his running game. Yeah, and that's the big thing is that uh, the, the Saints defense has just been so porous, and the Frank Gore has been running like a man possessed this year. Yeah. Um, you know, all, other game we've got this weekend, of course, big one. You can see a huge uh, Packer fan here, Cole, wearing Charles Woodson Super Bowl emblem jersey, and uh, Andy wearing his favorite player. Uh, I, I, I met Mark Shamira at a party one time. We hot tub together and everything. Have uh, fun. Oh, yeah. Well, sorry to hear that. Um, it's really, it's really awkward. Uh, well, the Giants are going to be traveling to Green Bay, uh, coming off their big victory. Uh, if you remember, these two teams played each other in the regular season. The Giants gave them a run for their money. Green Bay scored at the last second field goal after Eli Manning's uh, touchdown pass and two-point conversion uh, without a uh, the run action, two-point conversion. The interesting thing about that two-point was they ran it the exact same week before, and Green Bay didn't even see it coming. It's just ridiculous. But anyways, um, I'm going to go with the Giants uh, uh, with this one. Uh, they're playing hot. They're playing tough. I've said... For weeks that the Giants are the one team the Packers should fear, and uh, I, I I think they've got the pass rush, they've got the defense, they've got the offensive weapons because Green Bay's defense can't stop anyone. And D. Eli Manning is clutch in the fourth quarter and not taking anything away from the Green Bay Packers, uh, but their playoff hopes are going to fall through the ice this weekend. Uh, Cole, any thoughts on that? No. Well, oh, well, okay. I. See the Packers. I think they'll win. I think they'll just edge it out. It'll be a close game again, and I'm going with the better quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. In this one, the guy's played out of his mind this year. Literally the best season quarterbacks had in a long time. What in like two years? Yeah, it's a long time in football. Football years. You and uh, Cole, do you? Uh, I'm assuming you're picking the Packers in this one. How do you think they match up against that uh, New York Giants pass rush? <coughs> They have a young line, inexperienced, but they've done a pretty good job protecting Rodgers this year. It has improved since last year, and then and definitely That's from two years ago. But the Giants have an amazing pass rush. I mean, yeah, Pierre but, Paul is. is but is Aaron Rodgers gets the ball out of there so fast; it does your the defense doesn't have time to react to that. That is true. Aaron Ross, however, is going to be playing this weekend despite suffering a concussion last weekend. Um, that's a that's obviously a big plus for the Giants secondary. Um, I don't know. How do, you, how do you think the Packers are going to be able to match up against Eli Manning and that plethora of receivers that he has? Um, the Packers do lead the league in interceptions. Eli hasn't thrown a lot this season, but uh, they got some good corners and they can uh, force Eli to make some mistakes. The pass rush hasn't been there this year, but it hasn't been non-existent either. It's, oh. They're still getting to the quarterback. Well, they certainly are. They certainly are, but. Uh, 
I, I just I just feel the Giants are. They, there's a spooky feeling about them. If you remember 2007, they just got hot at the right time, and it didn't matter who they played. They went on the road in all those games, and, and you know, it culminated with them knocking off. You know, what we thought was the great. What could have been the. Would have been a could have been a should have would have been a, the best team ever in the uh, 18 and 0 New England Patriots and then made them 18 and 1. So uh, you know this is a battle tested team. They've been here before. Uh, I don't think the Packers' record uh, 15 and 1 or their talent scares them. You know they've shown they can beat a team like this before. And how can they cover Packers receivers though? It's not necessarily about covering the Packers receivers. It's about the pass rush. If you can disrupt the timing, um, you know force a couple of errant throws. Um, you know, you can obviously get Aaron Rodgers off this game. No quarterback is unbeatable. That's true. Um, Aaron Rodgers is about as close as it gets. But if you're going to beat him, you get in his face, you pound him in the ground. The Kansas City Chiefs did it this year. Um, you know, the Packers aren't perfect. Uh, they're 15-1. and one. You know, and they could very well be 15-2 uh, and two after this weekend. You know, time will tell. Um, I'm going to go with the final score, 34-31, New York Giants. And uh, we're going to be right back with some questions and comments, and then we'll wrap up the show for next week. Thank you. It's question time! Cool, we're going to keep doing this until you dance too. Alright, that's enough. Um, all right, so our first uh, question comes from Ryan Hebert out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Uh, his comment about the Green Bay Packers game this weekend is, uh, I just want to play football, nothing else. Well, Mr. Hebert, I'm uh, assuming you're a grade schooler with dreams of playing football someday. <laughs> and <laughs> The best thing I can say to you is uh, you better start writing up. Um, and best of luck, uh, best of you. You go get them, squirt. Um, we were actually talking about coaching a Pee Wee football team, so maybe we can we'll talk to your parents and talk to your mom alone. <laughs> uh, maybe over at dinner, something like that. And we'll get you on the team. Mr. Kako. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, no, I'm not going to debate, uh, bring out Mr. Kako. Um, I'm a New York Jets fan, so we're going to wrap up the show, talk about the major changes going in New York right now. Uh, Uh, thank you. Um, major changes in, in New York right now. Um, uh, Brian Schottenheimer is finally fired. Obviously, that was pretty sweet. We certainly appreciate that by the uh, Jets' uh, management. And uh, Tony Sperano comes in as the offensive coordinator, and there's rumblings that Todd Haley may follow him. Uh, this could point to a Dwayne Bow si uh, signing because he is a free agent, which would be nice. Um, I don't know. I'm really excited about the future of, the, of New York. Uh, Andy's still holding out uh, that Peyton Manning's going to end up as a Jet. Uh, obviously, you know, we'll, uh, the time will tell as far as that comes. We'll probably have an answer by that. I probably assume by March or April, whether or not he's going to stick with the organization. Uh, well, that's it for the Chris Baxter Show. Uh, this is the NFC Roundup. Uh, we'll be doing a special on the AFC tomorrow. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please post them on our Facebook or on Twitter. Um, and uh, best of luck if your team is playing in the playoffs this weekend. I know mine is not. Andy's is not. <sighs> Unfortunately, Cole's is. Well, thank you. You guys have a great night. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow for our AFC Roundup. <laughs> Just cracked Cole in the temple with my elbow. Dead. Welcome back to the Chris Baxter Show. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's on me. No. Damn it. <laughs> I'm going. All right, we're good. <laughs> no, no. All right, here we go. Uh, welcome back to the Chris Baxter Show. We're going to be talking. <laughs> Eagle eyes. <laughs> uh, we're going to be talking about the New Orleans Saints. And, um, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. A used pink bathrobe, a rare. 
means no globe a smurf tv tray i bought on